As you can see, there is a 2024 Mustang Dark Horse behind me. Scott's never driven one before. This is kind of exciting. I am, right? Let's just go right to the top. Let's check out the best of what Ford has to offer with this new S650 Mustang. And ultimately, get our 20-inch Tridents installed as well as our dual rate springs and take it for a spin. Let's check it out. Mustang Dark Horse. Yeah. I haven't even been a normal one yet because <laughs> you didn't let me try the other. <laughs> so we're just going to go right, right to the best. The Dark Horse. And we all know you're a drag guy. Just got the 10R80. Yes. So how do we go into drag mode? Drag mode, so the silver buttons on the steering wheel up down. You have the cool graphics there. Oh, well, that's sweet. It's a little wet, but we're going to go right to the drag strip. <laughs> Pony, is Pony button. Oh, we're already in the... And that you can spin the car. Everyone likes to spin the car. So we have how many miles on this thing? 117. 117. Jeez. What better thing to do with 117 miles? Huh. I was expecting a downshift. the gear it's it feels bigger interesting you think so I think so maybe just because the screens three feet long tell me the then visibility again, isn't better though visibility is better even looking out the side did yeah. you say they dropped yeah the yeah. sight line here mm hmm I'll tell you what the Ford does kill it with the interior it is so nice. Everything looks like carbon fiber. We even have a cover over here blocking your tilt lever so you don't see it. <laughs> so you still need to turn off traction control. <laughs> because it's it a little just, wet outside. <laughs> it just spun second gear and it pulled the power out. <laughs> Now, what options does this thing have? This is just a, a base dark horse. It's got the, I Ricardos think the- Ricardos and the trans. Yeah, Ricaro. And it, it is, this, I believe, the 700A package. So it has all the premium stuff, like the, you know, the widescreen and the leather. Is there models there. that don't come with the widescreen? So I'm not sure if the base dark horse, I know the EcoBoost and the GT, the base models, they have two separate screens. It's not These one. are two separate screens? Yes. So but on the drag car, there's going to be a line here? Yes. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> really? Some people online are saying that they're like, they like the two separate screens. Wow, okay. I wonder how this is in sport. So that definitely does that a lot quicker than it seems like the uh, third gens or the original 10 or 80s. They spend some time on the trans tuning. It definitely doesn't shift that quick. Well, that's cool. I almost want to shift it going down the track now <laughs> because it does it when you want to do it. The brakes are nice too. <laughs> Definitely flatter in the rear because I was going a lot faster than I thought right there. <laughs> I felt <laughs> like it didn't nose dive over it. The car just kind of yes, was down. Tucked it to the ground. Yeah. You just want to live in drag mode, don't you? Yeah, I want more RPM. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was flashing. It wouldn't let me downshift anymore. <laughs> This is cool though. I, I'm definitely impressed with how quickly that thing shifts. I wonder if that's more or less in the dark horse calibration or if you're gonna see that as well in the GT. The blue car out in LA shifted almost, I, I would say pretty similarly. And of course that even had the, I wanna say the 331s in the rear because it wasn't a performance package car. Gotcha. Um, and this has three, this is, I mean, all dark horses are performance packs and the automatic cars come with the 355s. Gotcha. Oh, did we hit a GM braking? We did. We had 0.45 Gs on the, <laughs> the turn lane. 
So does this make you a little bit more excited for our GT to come? Oh, gosh, yeah. In fact, I'm looking forward to possibly shifting the automatic going down the track. Heck, yeah. Because it's, you know, technology, right? Game changer, these automatics are so much faster, you can't shift the manual as fast, but the delay in the 2018 trying to use the paddles was terrible. You had to like literally predict and do it, you know, three, 400 RPMs early. This, when I was pulling it, it was- Snappy. Yeah. So that could make, especially when we're out there doing 12s or 11s, you know, to make it more fun, be able to shift it yourself. 100%. Now, don't get it twisted. It's not dual clutch GT500 quick. No. But it is quite a bit quicker than the S550. Oh, that thing grabs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a drift brake. <laughs> it didn't do it at first, and then it wanted to put us through the window. I'm so glad I checked because there's a cop right there behind us, and I was just going to nail it off the stoplight. <laughs> How do you think of the sound with the Steeda H-pipe on there? Looks, sounds awesome. I mean, when you can take factory mufflers, mm -hmm. factory exhaust manifolds, factory cats, yep. add a resonator delete, and it sounds this good, that's incredible. 100%. It's the reason they're so popular. Yeah, this is, it looks weird with this lower. It I takes some getting used much, to. Yeah, it's almost like I'm sitting too high in the car. Track gauge layout and drag gauge layout take a little bit of. Did you hear that pop? Yeah. Take a little bit of time to get used to. Yeah, there's boogies. Because the distance in between the numbers gets larger, and between seven and eight, you see how wide that is versus like five and six. Oh. That's so it's like weird. a little deceptive. So it's not, it's not linear. No. So you need to kind of pay close attention when you're getting close to that. Oh, look, it's complete progressive. Yeah. It's a progressive spring. It's a <laughs> progressive tack. <laughs> that makes a lot of noise. <laughs> like, it really does. Like, huh. So what's your favorite part? Uh... Actually, the paddle shifters, and awesome. then this dash. And then just, you know, it's always been something that Ford's been really good at in the interior. It's, it's the stitching, right? It's the piping on the steering wheel up here. I noticed when I opened up the door, you have the little Mustang pony here yes. in the corner. Little Easter which eggs. Which Ford has been uh, doing, you know, like with the American flag on the uh, Raptors and stuff like that. No, this thing's sweet. I like it a lot. I wish I got to drive a manual, but this will do. This is it. Modified Dark Horse. So what, dual rates? Dual rates. Resonator delete? Resonator delete H-pipe. H-pipe, okay. Yep. And our 20-inch Trident wheels. The wheel setup is uh, 20 by 10 in the front, 20 by 11 in the rear, with a 275-35 NT555 G2 from Nitto. And in the back is a 315-35, a little bit more meat. Nice. Uh, G2 as well. So I'm excited to feel, honestly, how they just, these dual rates feel. We've spent a lot of time with dual rates out on the track in our HPDE car, on our yellow 20 car, on the EcoBoost, uh, the 350, the Mach 1, we have lots of time. GT500, it's easily one of our most popular springs we make. Gives you good street manners, mm -hmm. and then when you go to push that thing, it really, really does respond, so. For sure, and we know that Ford did change the Magnaride calibration for the 2024 Mustangs, not only the EcoBoost and GTs, but also the Dark Horse has its own specific Magnaride calibration as well. So uh, I'm excited to see how 
everything works well together. Let's see. Out in LA, we had the opportunity to drive the Mustang EcoBoost out on an autocross, a uh, little small autocross course, as well as a base GT, and then driving the Dark Horse um, just the other day with the uh, factory calibration, factory wheels and tires. Um, it was very, very well sorted. Honestly, it, it having so much time behind the wheel of both a 350 and a Mach 1 and this kind of being the new performance variant from Ford, um, this road better, honestly, in my opinion, better than the 350 stock, better than the Mach 1 stock. Um, you could tell it was kind of a combination of both. 350 was a little bit more rough. Mach 1 was smoother. But, uh, yeah, see? It's surprising. Yeah. That's usually very rough right there. And that's with the dual rates. You know, everything's working as it should together. The dash looks even better from the passenger side. Really? Because the steering wheel's not in your way. That's true. That's true. Where I was like in the steering wheel, I was tilting it down too much. And it was getting in the way of the RPMs. I'm loving the visibility. It's ridiculous. I do feel like I'm sitting higher because everything else is lower, mm -hmm. even though it's pretty much the same, the same, uh, you know, height of where you're sitting. So as you can see, uh, we just had a hurricane go through. <laughs> um, a lot of cleanup going on around Valdosta here. Thankfully, everyone's safe. Still returning power in some places. the tires don't still have some old release on them? Jeez. A little bit. I'm not going to push it too much. No. But it does feel nice and flat. Snappy shifts too. Definitely feels more of a race car today. in those turns it is just nice and flat I'm not gonna lie it's making me want our front sway bar on here at this point because it's starting the higher spring rates everything's working well together but you're able to throw it in the corner a little bit faster you're starting to feel a little bit more of that body roll let's try the uh, paddle shifters DCT. No, but no, it's not a GT500. It closes the gap way more than I thought the 10 or 80 was ever capable of. 100%. I mean, the DCT sounds like you're in an exotic car shifting that thing, but this is this is cool. Four six. But it was spinning off the line and short shifted second. Go and try it again. You said FAM got what kind of time? Uh, Stang mode got 3.9 seconds, 0 to 60. You know I like your Stang mode, but I'm calling BS on that. <laughs> There's, n I don't, s we didn't leave a half a second in 60 freaking miles an hour. spinning way bad that's what that orange light is on the dash <laughs> give it like a 1200 4.7 that was a better start it was short shift again though. it's all good it's fun it shifts amazing it handles even better now but at the end of the day, like I honestly, I, I, I could not be more excited to get one of these in a, with some sticky tires on them, get with Hawk Performance to get some new brake pads and like really feel what this thing's capable of. At Sebring or at the firm. Or at the drag strip. <laughs> 100%. What do you think it run? 
I don't know. It doesn't have enough miles on it. Clearly, yeah. I think we need to break it in a little bit more. Maybe come back when it's at about a thousand miles and see what we got. And it's one of those things. This car will run good, even though the horsepower numbers were a little down yesterday because since we got it, been beating the poop out of it, which as you know, you drive a car you want the way you want it to perform from right. day one. But seriously, if you had to give it your best guess, it's 500 crank horsepower. Um, obviously this dynoted 408, but there is probably a little bit more braking in that needs to do. Uh, we don't know the weight of it. We should have scaled it. That's true. But Mother Nature had other plans this week. Of course. Although it's nice out today. Uh, it should be able to go 12 0 11 9. It's just usually you need kind of, you, you need one or the other, right? Horsepower or weight reduction. Right. Traction, it, it's going to be a given at the drag strip. You, you got a good sticky surface. We're blessed with South Georgia Motor Sports Park. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're going to find it. You're going to try it a couple times. You're going to find that sweet spot where it really hooks. But you like to think if this thing actually ends up making in that 430 range to the tires that we were hoping for, I mean, it's got an 11 second ET in it all day long. Which uh, Middleton Motorsports, uh, they posted up uh, on YouTube shortly after we did with this car. They had a Tremec dark horse that made 440 to the tire. So I'm not sure how many miles that car had on it. Obviously, every dyno is different. The fuels are, especially this time of year, people are starting to get winter blend on the fuels. Um, so there's a lot of different variables that go into what these numbers, you know, what, what numbers people are getting out of these cars, yeah. you know what I mean? The other thing too, you gotta remember, um, during the hurricane yesterday is when we made that 408 horsepower. And it was dumping rain right outside the bay door. I right. mean, if the humidity is not 100% in those conditions, you know, it wasn't good air. That's for darn sure. We know Evan Smith ran, and when the 2018 GT came out, performance package one, premium car, Magna Ride, Ford threw in the keys, said, throw, get your best time. And I want to say it was like absolute mint conditions. I think he was up in New Jersey or something and it was winter time. And Evan always has some tricks up. Yes, he does, 100%. And, but he was able to get, I believe, an 1188 out of that car, both yeah. stock. Mm -hmm. um, so provided that the conditions are the same for this car, yes, it may weigh a little bit more, but it's got more power. It's got the technology with the A10. It's got, uh, it's got all the different, um, you know, tech additions that Ford added onto the car, I'd say it's got an 11.5, 11.6 in it. You're saying 11.5? 11.5, 11.6. Oh my goodness. I think it's got it. Well, we're gonna have to get Jaleel and head up to South Georgia Motor Sports Park after a Mustang week and see what she can do. We know he's familiar with the, uh, the track strip, so. We'll have to see what we got. <laughs> Let us know what you think. Uh, what do you think the car is going to run? Were you disappointed about the dyno numbers yesterday? Do you understand the conditions we were in? And uh, what's your most exciting thing you think about this new uh, S650 Mustang? Let us know what other videos you want to see. Anything on the EcoBoost, the GT, obviously the Dark Horse, what we got our hands on first. Really excited about that. Um, but there are a lot of parts coming down the pipeline for 2024 from Steeda, so be sure to stay tuned to our website for anything and everything 2024 Mustang. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe, the notification bell, and don't forget the most important thing. Speed matters.